Good morning, children. The Bagus, the play is a chapter written by Anton Chekhov, a Russian writer. So we started this chapter yesterday. We had started it off also. So let's again uh, discuss like what this chapter is about, what its themes are. So basically, this chapter highlights the fact like uh, in order to make your life of some worth, we must work. So work is the key to a happy life, a quality life. So unless we work, we cannot expect our life to become better. So shun laziness. So uh, don't expect the miracles to happen in life. Just set to work. Only then we can expect, only then we can hope that our life will become better. When we start working hard, then even miracles start happening. Okay. And secondly, children, no, uh, it's this chapter is also about uh, uh, our inability to judge a person. Sometimes a person who appears to be a beggar doesn't happen to be a worthless fellow. This story is, you know, uh, a proof that the person who was a beggar was begging was actually the one who just needed a push-up. He just needed some, you know, uh, motivation. He just needed some support. And that helped him become uh, even a notary, even, a, you know, a very uh, respectable person of the society. And moreover, the kind of, you know, addiction he was uh, engaged in, that also just needed, he just needed some support and he was able to overcome that addiction, that problem, and he became a respectable person of the society. And third thing uh, that is equally important, like working in life and, uh, you know, uh, giving opportunity to the person, to other people, you know, so that they can grow up. That is also very important. And this can happen when we have the feelings of uh, empathy and compassion towards others. Unless and until we are compassionate, uh, affectionate, you know, uh, compassion is, you know, the feeling of love and uh, uh, understanding for the other fellow human beings. Okay, for anyone, for any living human being, when we feel the, you know, when we have the feelings of love and uh, understanding, it means that we are compassionate. So this feeling of love and mutuality, you know, makes us become, makes us being a human. Okay, like being human is being compassionate. Being human is being lovable, uh, okay, having the ability to love all. Uh, so this uh, compassion, uh, first of all, uh, it is like the very protagonist of the story, the one who gives the beggar a chance to grow up, the one who gives the beggar a chance to start working, that person. Then uh, more than that, it was that lady Olga, that uh, domestic mate, at the house of that protagonist. It was that maid, Olga, who actually was compassionate, who did the work of that, uh, you know, beggar uh, without letting anyone know about it. So that is actually compassion. When you don't make, a, when you don't announce it in the world, like what you are doing for the needy person, okay? Uh, carrying the cameras and uh, announcing what you are doing is not uh, being compassionate. Okay, actual compassion, actual charity, actual empathy is, when you don't even let the uh, the very recipient know that you are doing something for him or her, that is actually compassion. So that is what our culture has always taught us: like being compassionate, being affectionate, being kind, being empathetic is not about announcing announcing like what we are doing. It's about doing something when even the recipient doesn't come to know like whether he is being given a favor or not. So that uh, Olga, you know, she. Basically, the very uh, uh, protagonist, when he made the beggar uh, rise from that place where he was begging and then taking him to his home and giving him uh, work, that was uh, the biggest example of being compassionate. And uh, because it's easy to give something to somebody, it's very easy to give somebody realistic help to somebody. But the more difficult thing is to make the person independent. Okay, the, what we should do it, like instead of giving the needy person a materialistic help, that yes, sometimes it's also required, but more than that is making that person capable so that that person doesn't need to ask you for help. So that is more important than even giving materialistic help to somebody else. 
right? So instead of being just kind, we need to, we can be empathetic, we can be compassionate. That is also very important. So the protagonist of the story is compassionate, he's empathetic, he made the weather work and tried to make him, uh, number one, uh, get rid of uh, the addiction, tried to make him become independent. But here, the support of the Olga, that, uh, uh, you know, domestic help, she helped that beggar overcome the crisis. And uh, that compassion made beggar realize that he must also do something for himself. So that compassion actually brought in a big change in that beggar and he became a notary in the end. So the point is, children, the most important thing we need to, you know, accept, learn from the chapter is that we must work hard in life. There is no redemption except when we work. Okay, and let's try not to misjudge anyone. Okay, even when we come across somebody, maybe uh, let's not judge a millionaire the, from the one's looks, whether somebody is a millionaire or, or what. So judge, looks are usually deceptive. Let's try to, number one, let's not judge. And secondly, if we feel like if sometimes the situation is such, then uh, we must try to go into the depth of the character, not just the, the way that the protagonist you know, went into the depth of the character and was able to make out that the, that person was telling lies. Right? And moreover, uh, that person was not actually a beggar, he, he was a good singer once upon a time, and he had been dropped from the choir. And uh, the bigger thing that he got to know that he had been an addict. So the, because of the addiction, he, had, he could do nothing. So uh, that also can be a theme like, uh, uh, you know, any sort of addiction makes us unfit for any job. So the, uh, so the theme is like, the number one, in order to do something, in order to be a, uh, be a useful person for the world or for the society, first we need to be an independent and healthy person devoid of any sort of addiction. Addiction kills us. Addiction makes us a misfit. Okay, addiction leaves us uh, unable to do anything in life. Okay, so now let's see the chapter. So here is the weather. We had started reading it. So what we had read that, uh, <clears throat> let's read the first paragraph again so that you people are all reminded of what we had done. So kind sir, have pity. Turn your attention to a poor hungry man for three days. I have had nothing to eat. I haven't five kopecks for a lodging. I swear it before God. So this was how the beggar was pleading uh, for something or the other from the protagonist. Okay, so who the protagonist is? Mr. Sargi. So the advocate Sargi was, uh, you know, pleaded by that, uh, by this uh, beggar for something. And uh, this Sargi was able to make out like the person was somebody who he had seen earlier also. So where he had seen, he had seen him earlier. Uh, so, he had seen him earlier uh, and at that time he was, you know, telling some other story. So Sargi was able to make out that, that he was a liar and when he told this to the beggar, so then let's see what he says. Let's start from this page. This is dishonesty, my dear sir. He cried angrily. This is swindling. I shall send the police for you. Damn you. So who says this? Sargi says to the beggar. He tells him that you are dishonest and if you're telling lies, then you are uh, liable to be sent to jail. Then I'll call you police. I'll call police for you. Then uh, at this, you know, the beggar will, you know, apologize. Sir, he said, laying his head, hand on his heart, the fact is I was lying. He admits. I'm neither a student nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. So he admits that he was neither a student and nor was a school teacher. Because uh, uh, Sargi had been told two stories by this beggar, at one time that beggar told him that he was a teacher, at one time he had told him that he was a student. So one time teacher, one time student, and because the fact is like when you tell lies, you cannot remember like which lie you told earlier. So because lies have hundred stories, but when you will be speaking the truth, then it will have only just one story. That's why it's easier to speak the truth, okay? 
so that person you know uh, i am neither a student nor a school teacher all that was fiction formally i sang in a russian choir and was sent away for drunkenness so why was he dropped from the choir because he was a because he was a sort because he was a drunkard but what else can i do i can't get along without lying so he says what else can i do so here he shows uh, he makes excuses for not doing anything he is making excuses for being a big beggar the fact is there cannot be any excuse for not working there cannot be any excuse okay so what can you do you ask what uh, what you can do cried sarvi coming close to him work that's what you can do you must work work yes i know that myself but where can i find work how would you like to chop and wood for me i won't refuse to do that but in these case even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread see the excuse again so the uh, when the advocate offered him work of chopping wood then what excuses beggar make made he said like uh, i don't refuse but even uh, very expert woodcutters are uh, idle even they don't have any job will you come and chop wood for me yes sir i will very well we'll soon find out sargi hesitated along rubbing his hands he called his cook out of the kitchen so sargi reached home and he called his cook here elga he said take the gentleman into the wood shed and let him chop wood the scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his shoulders the scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his shoulder as if in perplexity and went irresolutely after the cook so the beggar had no choice it was obvious from his gait gait is the way he walk it was obvious from his gait that he had not consented to go and chop wood because he was hungry and he wanted work so apparently he did seem like willing to be, to do any work because he was hungry but simply from pride and shame because he had been trapped by his own words it was obvious too that his strength had been undermined by vodka and that he vodka is also wine a sort of drink and that he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for toy so why didn't he want to work there are so many reasons what was the reason why wasn't he ready to work number one he was like he that his strength had been undermined by the vodka his addiction to drink had uh, you know lessened his ability to work and then he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for work so because he was unhealthy how was he unhealthy because of his addiction to drinking so his addiction had made his body weak so he was not actually ready to work sargi hurried into the dining room from its windows one could see the wood shed and everything that went on in the yard standing at the window sargi saw the cook and the beggar come out into the yard by the back door and make their way across the dirty snow to the shed olga glared wrathfully at her companion wrathfully means distastefully hatefully so olga looked hatefully at uh, this new companion shoved him aside with her elbow so means put him aside okay she uh, might have pushed him aside with her elbow unlocked the shed and angrily banged the door so sargi went to his own dining room and from there he saw what was happening in the shed so he could see that olga had brought that man out of the shed and uh, after he uh, she dropped him there she went back to the kitchen and closed the door from here we feel as if olga was very cruel olga was very cold towards the man this is what we can see now next he saw he over here is sargi only next he saw the uh, the pseudo teacher seat himself on a log who is a pseudo teacher pseudo means a, a, a fake teacher why does the narrator call him pseudo teacher because that person the beggar had told a story that he had been a teacher earlier but that was not true that was not a fact 
so the narrator calls him a pseudo teacher because he was not a real teacher he had told a lie about it so next he saw the pseudo teacher seat himself on a log log is a piece of wood and become lost in thought with his red cheeks resting on his fist then sarge saw sarge saw that that person that beggar was he kept his uh, you know cheeks resting on his fist and he was lost in his thoughts the woman flung down an axe at his feet spat angrily and judging from the expression of her lips began to scold him so the woman what did that olga do then she gave she gave him an axe and she you know spoke something angrily and uh, because of the kind of expression the man was giving uh, she uh, she began to scold him so olga seemed to be very strict with the man okay first he handed him over an axe so that he could chop the wood with that and then when she saw that the man was not willing to do any the work then she even scolded him the beggar irresolutely pulled a billet of wood towards him set it up between his feet and tapped it feebly with the axe so now the beggar started chopping the wood in a very feeble and weak manner the billet wavered and fell down so that wood you know that that wood which he was cutting it wavered and fell down the beggar again pulled it to him blew on his freezing hands and tapped it with his axe cautiously as if afraid of hitting his overshoe or of cutting off his finger the stick of wood again fell to the ground so what was happening the man was trying to chop the wood but he was unable to do this because the addicted people you know they become mentally sick they are not able to do any work not even physical work because in order to do something like this also you need to have you know you need to aim at the right place to hit the x that he was not able to so the children or the people those who are addicted to any sort of thing you know they become mentally mentally as well as physically unfit to do anything they need a lot of time to come to the track sarge's anger had vanished and now he began to feel a little sorry and ashamed of himself for having set a spoiled drunken perhaps a sick man to work at mental labor in the court now sarge when he saw the man struggling to work now he was sorry for having brought this man in this kind of weather to work why this kind of man because it was a spoiled and drunken person so you making a spoiled and drunken person work in this kind of weather was not really uh, a very welcome step for the sarge right now so he was sorry an hour later olga came in and announced that the wood had been chopped so after an hour olga told sarge that the wood had been chopped so an hour before that person the one who was not even able to chop one single wood how did he do that chopping in one hour good give him half a ruble said sarge if he wants to be uh, if he wants he can come back and cut wood on the first day of each month we can always find work for him so sarge was very happy and he told olga to give him uh, to give him uh, how much uh, to give him half a ruble so that's the currency of russia only so he she uh, he asked her to give him half a ruble and he could tell him that if he wanted to come back then he can come on first of each month and they will have a work for him on the first of the month the wave made his appearance and again earned half a ruble on the first of the month the wave the beggar so the beggar came on the first of the month and uh, did the work and earned half of the ruble although he could barely stand on his legs from that day on he often appeared in the yard and every time work was found for him so he would come on the first of every month and he could barely stand means it, it uh, you could see that he could not even stand on his feet but even then he would come and he would do work and uh, he would get the money now he would sho shovel snow now put the wood shed in order now beat the dust out of rugs and mattresses every time he received from from 20 to 40 kopecks 
and once even a pair of old trousers were sent out to him so the man started coming on the first of each month and each time his work started improving now see now he would shovel snow now he would be able to put the snow aside with that axe now put the wood shed in order then he would be arranging the wood shed now beat the dust out of rags then he would clean the rugs and mattresses so each time he received from 20 to 40 kopecks so the more money he started getting and even once he got even a pair of trousers right so the point is that he was promoted he he was getting promotion with his each visit do you remember that in the previous paragraph we got to know that when he would come each month in the beginning then he could not even stand on his feet why couldn't he stand on his feet because he was still a drunkard then because he was still weak right uh when sergi moved into another house we hired him to help in the packing and hauling of the furniture so when sergi moved into another house he hired him to help in the packing and hauling of the furniture this time the wave was over gloomy and silent he hardly touched the furniture and walked behind the wagons hanging his head not even making a pretense of appearing busy so then children this sergi was to was to shift so he was again called so that he could help in uh, packing and all at that time also he looked very uh, sad uh, sober and silent and he did not even make a show of that he was busy he only shivered in the cold and became embarrassed when the carters jeered at him means made fun of him for his idleness his feebleness and his tattered fancy overcoat so basically he was not doing anything he was only feeling cold and at that time the other you know other people those other carters you know those who were working and uh, moving and all they were making fun of his uh, idleness his weakness or his you know fancy overcoat after the moving was over sergi sent for him so finally sergi called him well i am i am happy that my words have taken effect he said handing him a ruble here is for your pains i see you are a sober and have no objection to work what's your name so sergi asked his name now for the first time lashkov well lashkov i can now offer you some other cleaner employment can you write i can that then take this letter to a friend of mine tomorrow and you will be given some copying to it work hard don't drink and remember what i have said to you goodbye so sargi saw that uh, this man was not able to work very hard but he was ready to work but he was willing to work so finally this man sargi offered him a job of copying so he asked him if he could write then uh, that beggar said yes he could write so very strange that a person who can write had become a beggar but once a person who became a beggar doesn't mean that the person has become uh, uh, you know useless forever so pleased at having put a man on the right path sergi tapped lashkov kindly on his shoulder and even gave him his hand at parting lashkov took the letter and from that day forth came no more to the yard for work so sergi had given him a letter of recommendation on the basis of which he might have got the job or not we don't know but after this th uh, this incident that lashkov never came to the yard for work two years went by then one evening as sergi was standing at the ticket window of a theater paying for his seat he noticed a little man beside him with a coat collar collar of curly fur and a worn seal seal skin cap this little individual timidly asked a ticket seller for a seat in the gallery and paid for it in copper coins so one evening when sergi was standing at the ticket window paying for his seat he saw a little man who was very well dressed up and was asking for a ticket for the gallery 
a ticket for a seat in the gallery children mind it seat in a gallery you know costs a little bit more than the usual ones so he was asking for a for a vip seat and he even paid for it in copper coins plushkov is that you cried sergey recognizing in the little man his former wood chopper how are you what are you doing how is everything with you so sergey was very pleased to see that the man who used to come to his yard as a beggar now he had become uh, such a civilized person so he asked him about his whereabouts all right i am a notary now and i am paid 35 rubles a month so notary did i asked you people to find out the meaning of notary did you find raise hand those who know the meaning of notary now come on yes those who know the meaning of notary raise hand yes yesterday it was given a small dictionary work to you what is a notary yes still no one those who are listening to me raise hand yes those who are listening to me raise hands okay only 11 only 12 children 13 14 15 16 15 children only 15 children are listening to me out of 30 it okay 18 those who are listening to me raise hands those who are listening to me raise hands okay 22 children why you people take so much of time if you are listening to me in raising hand raising hand just you know it can happen in one second yes manavit unmute yourself let me see manavit yes yes okay uh, so point is that lashkov points out the one who had been a beggar earlier he said now, now he had become a notary and he he was getting about 35 rubles a month thank thank heaven so notary is meaning you still have to find out children thank heaven that's fine i'm delighted for your sake i'm very very glad lashkov so thank heaven that's fine i'm delighted for you for your sake i'm very very happy lashkov uh, you see you are my godson in a sense i gave you a push along the right path you know do you remember what a roasting i gave you what is roasting children it's a sort of scolding so when you scold somebody and uh, later on you talk about it then it becomes a humorous way okay when you scold somebody at that at some particular time then you you are serious but when later on you are pointing about uh, when you are talking about that scolding then you become a bit humorous your tone becomes humorous so do you remember what a roasting i gave you i nearly had you sinking into the ground at my feet that day thank you old man for not forgetting my words so now sargi is taking credit for the for whatever had happened with for the kind of transformation he had been able to uh bring in this man uh, uh, lashkov so he is taking credit for all this let's see thank you to said lashkov if i hadn't come to you then i might still have been calling myself a teacher or a student to this day yes by flying to your protection i dragged myself out of a pit so the bag lashkov also agreed that yes if you had not given me a uh, if you had not given me a chance that day then i might have been still uh, going on as a beggar okay i dragged myself out of a pit means i i was able to come out of that uh, disastrous situation where i was in otherwise i might have been still there i am very glad indeed so thank you for your kind words and deeds i am very grateful to you okay children we'll do this tomorrow last one paragraph is left and uh, please go through these uh, questions there are six questions and even the last part how can we help beggars abolish begging 
how can we help abolish begging okay how can we help beggars this we discussed in the very beginning not by giving them materialistic help but by giving them or by enabling them to become independent okay so that is what we have to do then there is a suggested reading you can go for this also but basically those six questions plus this how can we help beggars do these questions and tomorrow will be discussion of these answers also